As you're studying economics with an eye to the future, you might be wondering what are the courses that I should take or the fields that I study that will produce the greatest value. That's why I've been doing a series on the fields of economics. And in this video, I want to explain why labor economics is the best field of economics. I'm going to highlight four reasons and make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to be dropping book recommendations to get you interested in and excited about labor economics. But the first reason is that labor economics is the most relatable field of economics. Now, of course, as I explained in a previous video, I study development economics and economic history, but it's really hard for me to relate to these fields. I live in a prosperous area. There are buildings that unironically have the word wealth plastered on them. It's hard for me to relate to questions in developing countries about what's the best way to give micro entrepreneurs loans or how does political instability affect the economy. Similarly, and this might surprise you, I live in the present. I do not live 200 years ago or a thousand years ago. It's hard for me to think of these things in history and how they relate to the present. But labor economics has always been relatable to me. That's because I make decisions with labor economics every day. Every day I'm deciding how much time I want to devote to my work, how much time I want to devote to my family, how much time I want to devote to entertainment. Anybody who is studying labor economics can almost immediately find something to relate to Mostly because one of the biggest questions in labor economics is what are the returns to education? How much money does college get you? And when you're studying labor economics, you're usually in college. And so you have that question right at the front of your mind. In fact, I've already done a video on the returns to an economics education. It's all about labor economics in a really clever way that we've figured out how valuable an economics major is worth. I'll put it there. Maybe I'll put a link at the end of the video as well. There are just so many fun and interesting fields in labor economics. There's health economics, economics of education, economics of crime, economics of the family, where there are a lot of topics that are pertinent to our daily lives, the economics of discrimination, immigration, minimum wage. So many of these topics are the kind of things that we talk about on a daily basis. And that's why reading labor economics papers can be so fun and engaging. For the second point, I've already set up a little experiment. The second reason why labor economics is the best field of economics is because it is in the news almost every day. Recently, it just has been popping up like crazy. And that's because there are concerns about the recovery from the pandemic, the struggles that people are having with hiring, how they're lifting wages. I am seeing it every day right now. And it's guaranteed in the modern times to just be there at least once a month because every month the unemployment numbers are released. So the first Friday of every month, you know that you can go to the news and you're going to be able to read about what's going on in the labor market. But is that because we're just a little more nerdy today or because we have more access to data? No, it turns out that this is a timeless principle. And to prove this, my little experiment was to go back 100 years from this week and just look in the New York Times and see if there were articles related to labor economics on the front page. And it did not take me long to find them. Within just a few clicks, I was able to find a dispute over wages and how a union was trying to fight for higher wages while the other side was trying to lower their wages. A couple days later, there was this other one that kind of related to labor economics, but it was really weird. I guess there had been some big shipment of babies from England. So not only is this a labor economics topic because it's talking about the economics of the family, but there's also within the article, as you read, the people People who are trying to get these babies are promising good education, good training. They're promising not to put them up for labor until they're at least 16. Like these are all human capital and labor economics questions that are being contained just in this really strange story about pilgrim babies that apparently just washed up on shore. This third one might be a little controversial. I'm sure there are going to be some people who disagree with me on this one, but that's okay. I think that labor economists end up being some of the most skilled economists out there. It is amazing to me how well labor economists grasp the technical aspects of working with data and identifying causal effects. In fact, most of my econometrics training came either 
in my labor economics course or because of labor economists. My intro econometrics textbook was Wooldridge. That's a classic. A lot of people have probably started off with that. And Wooldridge is a labor economist. If you're interested in learning econometrics here on YouTube, you can go over to Marginal Revolution University and you can watch a series of videos by Josh Ingrist, who is not only a pioneering econometrician, He's a labor economist. If you look right here on my shelf, I have Causal Inference, the mixtape. This is one of the newest and hottest books on econometrics by Scott Cunningham. He is a labor economist and he goes through and explains how you can be better at econometrics. In fact, a lot of the pioneering innovations in econometrics came from labor economists who were trying to estimate the causal returns to getting education or the causal effect of the minimum wage on employment. They're trying to grasp these really technical issues. And then because of that, they make huge steps in econometrics that we're able to use in a lot of other fields today. So I feel like labor economists really come out with that solid training and they have those technical skills that will really benefit you in your career. Speaking of careers, I'm going to get to a fourth principle related to careers. But since I already have this book out, I figure I should give you some of those book recommendations I promised you. So one of my favorite books on labor economics, I've mentioned it many times before, but it's The New Geography of Jobs by Enrico Moretti. Super interesting stuff on how jobs tend to be moving towards big cities and the returns to living in those big cities. Another book I want to recommend, but I'll be cautious about it because I haven't read it. It just came out the day that I'm filming this video is Making College Pay by Beth Akers. This is a book on the economics of college, how you can make a better bet on the future of higher education. Even though I haven't read it, the reason why I recommend it is because, like I said, it's easy to relate to these topics. Now, the fourth principle might, again, get me into a little bit of heat, but I think that labor economists have some of the best job opportunities right now. This relates to everything that has come before. Because labor economics is so relatable and the issues pervade so much of our daily lives, because it's in the news every day, people are interested in hiring labor economists. But not just that, because labor economists have really good skills, they can be employed in places where they don't even do labor economics topics. Now, I know I'm gonna get some heat for this, but I have some actual data to back it up, and I'm gonna share that data with you. But before I do, let me just remind you that if you have not subscribed to Market power, the marginal cost of subscribing is very close to zero. And if you've made it this far in the video, the marginal benefit is definitely greater than zero. So a rational viewer like you will subscribe. So I actually collected some data on this and it's going to be something that we have to interpret with some caveats. The data come from job openings for economists. This is a job site targeted for PhD economists. So the job listings are mostly for somebody who has completed their PhD. However, the way I like to look at this is if companies are hiring in different fields for PhDs, they often want people working with them who might not have that PhD training, but have strong undergraduate backgrounds. So I think that if we're seeing these trends in PhD economists, they equally apply to undergraduate economists as well. If you look at this data over the past six years, about 20 to 25% of positions have been looking for labor economist. Now you might be saying, wow, what does that mean? Like, how does that compare? Well, two other fields in the series that I've covered are development economics and economic history. And if you look at the number of positions that are looking for those types of economists, it is much, much lower. So if you dedicate yourself to learning more labor economics, there's a good chance that you have a really good potential ahead of you. Now, if you want to learn more about other fields of economics, you can go ahead and check out this playlist right here. Or if you want to dive more into labor economics, I've already made a playlist for that right here. We'll see you next time on Market Power.